Hey guys, Matt Eastwood. We are here working on the Cushman project again. It's been a little bit of a downtime. We had winter and I had a bunch of other projects going on and we're ready to start working on the Cushman again. Uh, so last time you guys may remember we worked on blasting the whole uh, sheet metal tub to get that all cleaned up and get all the major rust off of it. We got that clean, got it sprayed uh, with fast etch and it was good to go. Behind the scenes then what I ended up doing was just getting the, having the frame all, getting it all blasted here and in clean metal so that it's, uh, it's ready to go. And what ended up happening as always when you blast something is there's old sins or metal that you didn't realize was as bad as it is. Uh, ends up showing up. So one of the big things we're going to work on today is getting some of the metal repaired on the chassis here that was uh, some some old repairs and then also some some damage and uh, rust from it just sitting around uh, for quite a long out time outside. So the worst part right here that we uncovered is right here on the running board area. Uh, it's really pitted, which I knew it was kind of pitted, but it's, it ended up being really pitted, really thin, and it's just flimsy in here and isn't going to hold up and then also we have some holes down in here so uh, I sprayed everything down with fast etch just to get it all nice and sealed up and clean uh, but we need to actually take care of this area here so I'm going to work on fixing that also the front running board area here is all bent up and tweaked and damaged from just getting thrown around over the years I'm going to do a little bit of hammer and dolly work on that get it all cleaned up and we'll see if there's anything else major that we need to repair and I'll show you guys uh, kind of how it looked after everything's been uncovered All right, so first thing I want to do is get some of this uh, metal here that's, that's out of shape uh, straightened up real quick before we start working on this rusted area. I just want to kind of get these pieces straightened out. Uh, now this is a little bit thicker of steel. It's not like a 20 gauge. It's probably, I haven't measured it yet, but I think it's probably like a 16 gauge steel. Uh, so it's going to take a little bit more force, but it's the same no matter what. Um, so what we're going to do here is start by bridging this little spot here. We're going to tap right in the center. And we can keep working our way across. So here, this is actually like a this little high spot here. I'm gonna work by pushing this low spot up and even it up so we're hammering like a off dial. And just keep working our way up till we get a nice uh, consistent, consistent edge. So got most of the waves out there, but it is bent just a little bit up, so you can always just use a little bit of hand or some pliers or something. It doesn't matter as long as you can get it back into shape. But so we'll keep giving that a little tug. It's actually, I think, a little bent, so we actually need to push up there and hammer down. So what that's doing is pushing this area up and it's pushing this area back down so that it is nice and flat. So we start by removing the major waffles in it and then we can work on dialing everything in like that. So I'll work up into these other spots. It already is a lot better with just a little bit of hammering. Okay, now that we got uh, most of the dents worked out of this front section where we're gonna be working around, uh, I wanna go ahead and get ready to cut out this section we're gonna remake here that's all rotten. So first thing I wanna do is check the thickness of the material so we can make sure that we match it with fresh new metal that is the same thickness. So I have the Eastwood sheet metal gauge here. It has all our different gauges. You can use it on sheet metal, wire, all different types of stuff. It also has the decimal measurements on the back side, but uh, I'm thinking it's either 16 or 18 gauge, but I'm not quite sure. So we're going to check it in here where it doesn't seem to be quite as pitted as back in here that might give us a false reading. It may say something like 20 gauge back here, but it's reality like 16 gauge in the fresh section. So try with the 15 
it does slip over there, but there is a little bit of play. I don't know if you guys can see there moving up and down. It, it does have a little play in there, so that's telling me it's just a little thicker. So we'll go to 17 gauges. Got a little play too, which is an uncommon size. There we go, 18 gauge. Feels to be a nice, tight fit. I don't have any type of play, so that's telling me this is actually 18 gauge. I thought it was a little thicker, but I just think with the way it's folded over on the edges on the underside, it's got a hemmed edge, um, and with the bends here, it's actually a pretty, has a, quite a bit of strength in it in a little area. So I'm gonna work on cutting this out. We're just gonna be piecing a section in as a reminder for this project. We're doing this as a simple, straightforward project. We're not getting real crazy making whole entire sections. Uh, we're just piecing stuff in, showing you guys how you can do a real fun, simple beginner project uh, using a MIG welder and a handful of uh, hand tools. So I'm gonna get this piece cut out and make a pattern off of it and we can start bending up another piece and get ready to weld it in. All right, so uh, we got our piece cut off here and it is kind of a mess, as you can see. Uh, you can see here what they did for strengthening. Uh, it was actually welded right along this edge here that was welded to the front, but they basically hemmed an edge over here on the bottom. And that's what was giving this a lot of that strength. Uh, I was kind of deceiving. I thought it would be thicker material than 18 gauge, but uh, I think with this uh, hemmed edge here, it really gave it some strength and then of course the bend in here helps. So. What I'm doing just to make my pattern, so I just got some masking paper. I have a bunch of different rolls that are different widths that I've gotten at swap meets and stuff, um, but you can use whatever. And uh, I found a piece that worked pretty well, so I'm going to uh, use this to just kind of fold it in the corners, like so. And it's probably gonna be just wide enough here. Heat it down like that. So I'd rather have a little extra at the top than anything. You can always uh, sand it to fit. So fit that in there, and you can use it like a dirty finger. You can use just a pencil, just to help you when you're making your pattern visualize where everything is. And then we have this edge is a little rotten so we're gonna have to kind of use the other side as a guide and whatnot. So this will just help me with where our bends need to be and everything. We have some material left over for the hemmed edge there. And then here, it actually juts out a little bit. There, so. So I'll cut this out of paper, make sure that it fits half decent uh, before we actually cut it out of the metal. But once I'm sure that this will work pretty good, then we can uh, lay this flat and cut it out of the metal and then uh, transfer these lines over and start making up our piece. 
All right, so I got my piece all cut out, sanded, uh, cleaned off all the metal. I was just using some extra drops that I had from building other panels since we're doing something small. Uh, so what I'm doing is I mounted the hem die set for the motorized bead roller. Uh, it's a three-step process. Basically, uh, no longer do I have to do the hemmed edge by hand with a homemade tool and a hammer and dolly. You can basically do it with this hem uh, die set. So this is the step one of the die set here that we're going to put in. It actually has a little uh, guide or lip on it that you can basically just run it through and it's going to set a preset hemmed edge on there. Uh, so I'm going to run it through in this first step and a couple of passes and that'll fold the edge over. Uh, and then we can go to the next step and finally uh, the third step where we're going to crush everything. So I'll show you guys how quick and easy you can do this. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, actual actual hammer and dolly work out of the process and something that's a little more smooth and controlled. All right, so I got my bead roll all set up here and uh, I actually turned this up quite a bit here. So for the first step to make it, uh, you're not trying to fold it in one shot. Uh, it's got this lower edge in here that you can, um, that actually forms it in, but you don't want to try and do a one shot. It ends up getting a little, a little funny when you do that. Uh, so we're going to be using the bottom side of the panel, so I have this marked here. So we're using the bottom side, we're going to run through on this edge. And I have my little um, adjustable neck work light here on the changeable work light system so I can really see what's going on and make sure I keep everything seated. So I'll run this through probably a little more just to get the tip started. And I'm just pushing in just a little bit, just to keep it on that that guide here on the die. What that's going to do is start the tip, and you just keep light pressure in as you're feeding it through. Let the bead roller do the work. You don't need to push real hard. Uh, I like to go nice and slow on this first step, just to make sure that I'm getting a, a nice tip, because this is the edge that you're going to see on the panel. That that tip bent edge. So I'm not going to round the corner fully on this uh, because the other one didn't have that. It just had a straight roll. So we just kind of rolled around there. So I started the tip. See we just have a, a light tip on there. I'm going to go another full rotation. And we'll follow this along here like that. And you'll start to see it's going to start bending it up quite a bit more in the second pass here with one more crank of pressure on the bead roller. So just pushing it through like that. And again, I'm not going to follow the corner. I'm just going to let it right off the edge here. All right, so we got our next pass. All right, I went a little bit more aggressive, uh, turned it down about a crank and a half, and now we can start feeding this through a little more, and you'll see the bend is going to really start coming around now on our hemmed edge. So again, I'm just actually just holding with one hand here, keeping pressure in. Once you start the tip, it's uh, a lot more simple. Alright, so now we're on to step two here, and I got the dies all set up, and this die basically is going to push the material down into that tight groove there and get us over the 90 degrees. Uh, it's pretty much a one step process. I usually go down until it basically touches, and then I'll come back just a little bit just to make sure that I'm not scarring the panel up too bad, forcing it in there. So you just kind of feed it in. At this point, it'll kind of lock itself into that groove and it just folds it over as you go. It will give you that sharper 90, or I mean over 90, rather. We're already at 90. And I will put it over 90 for you so we can start crushing it down. So I'll go down just a little more, just to make sure, just a little off. Now we're just getting a little over 90 there. So that's, that's helping us, so now we can start crushing it down.
Alright, so I just did a little bit of sanding after we uh, broke that center line there and uh, got everything to fit up. I just got to, just using three little uh, stitch weld magnets to get everything set up. As you can see, I got one down there on the bottom and uh, it's fitting pretty good. Uh, I'm not too bothered by how everything's uh, fitting up. Now, I do have it. We just rough cut it in the beginning, as you guys may have noticed. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I have it overlapping just a little bit because this is more of a straight edge, my patch panel. And I just have it laying over top in some spots where it's uh, overlapping where the cut wasn't perfectly straight. So I'm going to take a scribe and just scribe a line that matches our patch panel, trim that out, and then it'll be a nice butt weld that we can fit in there, weld it in, and uh, should be pretty good. And then we can clean it all up and uh, call it good. All right, so in those last couple shots, you saw where I went ahead and used some Rust Encapsulator Plus just to brush in to the, uh, the channel there that was hidden when, we, when it was blasted. We obviously couldn't get in there in that hidden area and uh, get that all cleaned up. So I went ahead and wire brushed it off, coated it with some Plus. Then I sprayed the backside of our patch panel with some self-etching weld through primer and that got everything nice and coated and sealed up so when we welded it together, we're not gonna have any issues with things getting rusty uh, over time. When I welded everything up, it went pretty darn smooth and it was nice to have the blasted metal, the new metal, and good fit up and uh, it went pretty much as planned. In the front corner where the running board meets all these different sections, I ended up welding up that corner with that like three part corner. I uh, welded that area up where it's normally like a visible seam because I think I want to smooth out both of them and I didn't want to fill it with body filler or something later when we're smoothing things out. So I used some weld while I was in there to weld that up. I roughly blended it all in and when we go to start doing our final body work stage, I'll blend it a little nicer. We'll put a smear of body filler in there and it'll just look really, really awesome when it's done. So that's my quick update on the Cushman project. Yes, it still exists. I didn't give up on it. Just took a little break over the winter and uh, now we're back on this project. So now that I got pretty much all the major rust taken care of on it, we can kind of get into some of the more fun stuff like doing custom work to it, getting the drivetrain all finished out, getting brackets welded on and all that stuff. I think I'm gonna put the, the scooter together and basically make it like rideable um, in bare metal before we tear it apart and start doing the body work just to make sure that everything jives and works how I want it to and we don't have to go back into some nice paint to modify something, so. Thank you guys for watching and thank you for all the interest in the Cushman project. Uh, just drop us a comment down below. What do you think now that the thing's uh, not rusty anymore? Does it look like a worthwhile project? Thanks guys, get you later.